This is David with Best Rest Products, home of the cycle pump tire inflator that has a lifetime warranty. Today I'm going to be talking about in the tank fuel pump filters and how to change them. And I'm going to show you the change process for an 800 GS, BMW 800 GS. Uh, in other videos I've shown you about the in the filler neck Googlatech fuel filter. Uh, watch that video. As you fill through the nozzle of the gas tank, it filters out any contaminants. But if you're like me and your bike's 10 years old, uh, you put that filter in recently. And so anything that's in the bottom of that tank, or the fuel pump, or the fuel filter, that's been, that's been under 10 years of hard use, and uh, maybe it's time to service it or replace it. I've gone through that process. I'm going to lay it out for you. I'm going to explain it all. Be patient. This is going to take a while because there's a lot of things I want to show. And instead of just doing it, I'm going to explain why I'm doing it and some of the ins and outs to make it easier for you so you're willing to tackle this job. First, let me mention that uh, Google Tech makes uh, a series of uh, fuel filter pumps that go in the gas tank. Uh, they've come up with the special fuel lines that you need based on the BMW model. Uh, they have the filters. Uh, they have uh, external fuel filters for the KTM series that uh, allow you to filter the fuel before it gets to your injectors. So they've done a pretty thorough job. We've found the difficult to find uh, sources for all of these filters. Uh, brought them in from Europe, and now they're available on the Best Rest website as part of the Google Tech kit. So why, why all the bother about these fuel filters on the, uh, particularly the 800? Uh, why can't I just change the filter myself? Well, the way BMW set up their system, you can't replace the inline fuel filter that's in the gas tank. They don't sell that. They only sell the entire fuel pump assembly which is $450 or more. Well, instead, this filter and this uh, special hose is going to be a tenth of that price. So if you're willing to do the work, you're going to save a lot of money. And as long as you're uh, handy and capable with tools, this shouldn't be difficult. If I can do it, you can do it too. So let's talk briefly about the tools that I'm going to use in this process. I've got some Torx wrenches. I've got a uh, tool that helps me with some of the seals, just to pry seals apart. Flat screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of wire cutters. You may want to use a cutoff wheel to remove uh, the crimped on Bodecker clamps that BMW has used to crimp on the fuel hose. It's not a, it's not a, a hose clamp, instead it's a permanent clamp. And, uh, I was able to get it off using a pair of side cutters, but you may want to use this for that process. Uh, when they come off, they're very difficult to remove, and if you're not careful, you'll damage parts as you're in the removal process. But I've worked with a lot of these, so I've learned some of the tricks. Other thing you'll probably want to have is a set of calipers. Now, why do you need that? Uh, interestingly enough, for my 800, the indicated part from Italy is this one right here, MRT095. It's just their part number. And it's got two openings that are eight millimeters in diameter to allow it to go on to the end of the fuel pump and to go on to the end of this canister filter. However, uh, my particular bike had a different type of fuel pump and it was nine and a half millimeters, so this wouldn't fit. But the next size up, which is the MRT096, did fit. So my counsel is this, um, I would do the preliminary process when you have some downtime, take this thing out, take measurements, and then order the kit so that you don't get the wrong one. Nothing worse than, than getting parts and finding out it doesn't fit. So that's up to you. The other thing you'll need is a siphon. This is the Best Rest Moto siphon. You're going to need to drain the fuel out of the tank, at least down to where the large cap is on top of the uh, fuel tank itself. But I think you should drain all the fuel out and then look inside that tank and see what's down in there. Uh, in my case, I put this uh, Google Tech fuel filter in the filler neck uh, this spring, spring of 2018. But the bike had 10 years of service. 
So what has actually gotten down in the bottom of that tank? What's floating around? Let's find out. Let's solve that mystery. And unless I siphon out all the fuel, I'm not going to be able to see what's down there. If we're going to do the job, let's do it right, and let's do it 100%. The other thing you might need is a cup of coffee uh, or a beer. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing this canister cartridge, which I've cut apart. Uh, use the cutoff wheel and cut it apart. It's, it's a filter element that sits down inside, and it's wrapped up with a couple of plastic end caps. Uh, then around these end caps there is a, an accordion filter that I've pulled apart so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, what you're seeing is a black surface. When this was new, it was white. So in the 10 years of writing, this filter has strained out all of this black gunk from the fuel that I put in the gas tank. And this is what the backside looks like. So remember, uh, we're trying to filter out anything that we can from the fuel before it gets to our injectors. Let's also talk about fuel pumps. We made a decision not to get into the fuel pump business because there's so many variations and inventory of that would be impossible. Um, each bike has a different style of fuel pump. When you take out your pump, you can look at the numbers and it'll tell you what the replacement would be. Uh, BMW doesn't sell those, so you're going to have to go aftermarket. But we've got some good sources. We'll share those fuel pump uh, suppliers with you. We won't share the brand, or not the brand, but the model of the fuel filters because that's something we've worked hard to develop. Uh, if you do some digging, you'll probably find out what it is, but good luck getting them here in the U.S. We had to get them from overseas. So we've got our table laid out. We're going to bring the bike over here. We're going to start the process. I'm going to walk through it step by step by step, carefully explaining how to do this and preparing you so you can do the job yourself. So here we are about to begin the process. Uh, you know, safety third. Uh, you're going to have open fuel, gasoline, fumes. Uh, make sure you're away from any open flames. Use common sense. Enough said about that. Uh, here's where my fuel pump is, my gas tank. There's a rubber ring that goes around this, uh, but before I remove that, there's two connections, two electrical connections. You can't mix them up uh, because they're different sizes. And if you use a, a non-sharp blade and slide it down to that connector, you can just connect it in a heartbeat. You're just basically pulling the prong out of the way and lifting up. You could use your fingernail. Pulling by the wires may not be a good idea. So instead, I will use a pair of pliers. There we go. Two different sizes. You can't mix them up. We're going to tuck those up out of the way so they don't get in the way as I'm doing the rest of my work. Then we simply pull this rubber cap off to the side. Now, on the original bike, the way it comes, it didn't have this hose clamp. I put this on because I've already done this process once, but normally there's a crimped clamp, an Oedeker clamp that's fitted there. You do not have to remove that. You can leave that in place. I just figured I might as well put a hose clamp on it, cut off the old one, put a new one on. You do not have to remove this sensor right here. Just leave that in place. That doesn't have to go anywhere. So the first thing we do is we're going to take a Torx. We're going to loosen the two screws that hold this fuel line fitting. This fuel line runs to your injectors. And then this entire assembly pulls right up like that. First time I did it, mine was very tight and I actually thought I would have to take it apart here at the clamp. So that's what I did and that's why this hose clamp is here. But uh, you do not need to remove this clamp, you just have to lift this up. So now that we have that out of the way, we remove our boot. Tuck that up 
so it won't get in my way. The next process is this ring. This is like a big screw and we need a large flat screwdriver and we need a hammer. So we'll grab a hammer and we'll start loosening this big ring. I would recommend that you take a black marker and you mark one of these tabs right here at the back of the bike so that you know when you've reached the proper torque for that part. So as I tap this apart, you'll notice that that ring is loosening. And I'll get it to the point where now I can turn this by hand and then I can lift it off. Well, just make note, this did an, almost an entire revolution before it came loose. And I'm telling you that because this is your index with the mark. So when I reinstall this, I'm going to start here and then I'm going to tighten it down and I'm going to tighten it to the point where this black mark is once again at the back of the bike. So that's been removed. Here we're looking at the fuel assembly. The gas tank is below. Now it's just a matter of taking a hold of this pump or this uh, gas cap assembly and gently easing it upwards. Using the edge of a screwdriver, some pliers in your hands, you gently ease this up. Be careful, there's an, a big O-ring in there and you don't want to damage that. Okay, it came loose. We're going to pull this up. But if we get anxious and we go too fast, we're going to damage things that are inside. We've got a, a fuel level sensor that works on an arm. And if we're not careful, we're going to damage that, that very delicate component. So as you lift this up, you're going to kind of twist it to the side. And then you're going to pull the fuel line clear and then by gently turning it you pull everything out and here we have the complete fuel pump assembly. There's the fuel pump itself. There's a small uh, nylon strainer at the bottom to keep out uh, bits and bugs. Here's the fuel sensor that's so delicate. Here's that sealing ring uh, that I'm going to talk about in a moment. Here is the replaceable filter that we're going to replace in this process. And you'll notice that this line right here is uh, clear plastic. I've already replaced this line. I've already replaced this line. This was the original BMW uh, fuel line and I'm going to talk about that also in depth in a few moments. So once we have this out, we shake out as much gas as we can and we're going to remove this o-ring by gently working it around and off. There's an up and a down on this o-ring. If you can see the profile, the larger part of the flange is up. The smaller part of the flange goes down inside the tank. I started uh, this process, this filming, a couple weeks ago. And when I first pulled this out, this, this O-ring, this gasket, was nice and soft and pliable. But two weeks later, when I went to do the reinstall, this thing was hard and brittle, and it was actually too small to fit in the hole. So my counsel is this, if you're not going to have all the parts on hand to do the process within a few hours, then take this gasket and put it in a tray of gasoline and just let it soak. That way it won't shrink and it'll stay pliable. It's intended to be used with gasoline, so you're not going to hurt anything by doing that. Just a painful lesson learned. The next thing we want to do is we want to remove this delicate uh, fuel sensor assembly. And once again, we're going to take 
a screwdriver or my knife blade, reach underneath that tang and pull out that fitting. There we go. And to prevent any damage, we're going to remove this entire white piece of plastic. It's got some hooks, some arms that fit here by simply lifting them with your thumb. They'll come off of the holder and the entire uh, sensor unit comes off. We'll set that aside so we don't damage anything. At the bottom of the fuel filter is a strainer assembly. It's a piece of uh, plastic, very fine mesh, and it just press fits onto the end of this fuel pump. We'll set that aside. When I first did this, I had a lot of crap inside that mesh, which means that stuff was going into my fuel pump. That's not a good thing. We have some other fittings. This is the control for the fuel pump. This is the wire that runs power to the fuel pump. Just give it a squeeze and pull that off. And there's another connector right here that we pull off. This requires a little probe down in the hole and then this will pull out. You can't mix these things up in other words, the, the fittings are so uh, proprietary to that particular fitting that you're not going to get them mixed up. And then you have the fuel pump itself. And this is held with a couple of tangs here and here. And I simply open it with my fingers. And there is my, my fuel pump. This is a Bosch unit, and when it's dry, I can read the series number right there. Uh, you can buy a Bosch replacement, uh, but there are cheaper alternatives out there, and probably every good, bit as good as the Bosch, and for a fraction of the price. Now remember, BMW doesn't sell components. They sell the whole unit for 450 bucks. So I'm gonna save a lot of money by replacing uh, this fuel filter that's sitting right here and do it for a fraction of that price. I'm going to be working on the table now and one thing I want to do is to cover up that hole so they don't drop anything inside. Uh, don't want tools ending up down inside the gas tank. Now I go to a uh, Torx wrench and there's tiny little screws that are holding the retainer for this fuel pump. One here, and there's another one over here. There's also a grounding wire attached to that screw. You want to make sure that you reattach that wire when you're done. We can take this assembly off if we want. This is the housing that holds the sensor and the fuel pump. There's no need, but if you wanted to, you could. That's a Phillips screwdriver. Having everything out of the way does make the process go easier. And then we just pull this off. Note that there's a retainer right here on the back side. This retainer captures the ends of those screws. So when you put it back together, you want to make sure that you fit that in place. Also, when you're pulling this out, 
there's only one way it'll go. Otherwise things don't fit. It's like this. It's not backwards because then it won't go into place. Going back to the last screw, we take that out and we'll leave that screw attached to the grounding wire so we don't get that confused and this retainer is is uh, now loose so now we pull off our filter and there's our pump and our filter at the end of this filter is a tiny little o-ring that's important because that's going to seal between the uh, plastic housing and the end of the uh, canister filter. Uh, you could reuse it but the kits that we sell will come with an extra o-ring. Make sure that you put that back in when you install your new filter. <clears throat> when I took this apart from the factory setting, this black hose was held on to the barbed end of the filter using one of these Oedeker clamps. I pried my Oedeker clamp apart using a pair of pliers and a side cutter, but as long as you have the proper line you can cut it off and make it much easier. Note that there's a huge amount of pressure in this line. If you just push these on and don't mechanically attach them, they're going to pop off. So it's important that you use a hose clamp to attach this in place. The other thing, as I mentioned before, was uh, the proper application for this filter, or for this line, was the uh, MRT-095, which is a smaller diameter uh, hose opening. However, it simply wouldn't go on to this pump. But I discovered that by using the next model up, the 096, this opening was larger. I was able to get it on to this barb of the fuel pump and uh, then I attached it firmly with the hose clamp. So it's very important that you mechanically attach these. Uh, in the factory these fittings are heated and then pressed on with a machine uh, so that they're assured that they have maximum contact and it can't possibly come loose as you're bouncing down the trail. Am I going to replace this fuel pump? No, I'm not. Should I? Well, maybe, probably. It's been 10 years, but it seems to be working okay. I think the key is how much crud has been going into this, uh, this fuel pump through this little hole being pumped at high pressure through this line up to the injectors providing fuel for the bike. Uh, a replacement aftermarket pump is 100 bucks or less. Uh, if you get a Bosch, it's going to be probably twice as much. Um, like I said, we'll share with you the sources for these different fuel pumps and you can also do your own search. So what I've shown you is the disassembly of the fuel housing. I don't have to take it any further than this. Um, I have my fuel pump, I have my filter. Now it's just a matter of taking off the factory hose, uh, cutting off the clamp. You may want to use that grinder that I showed you to cut that off. Remember you're dealing with fuel so if you get a spark uh, there's a fire hazard. Uh, when you put on this Googletech fuel line uh, the manufacturer suggests that you take a pan of boiling water and you put the ends of these lines into that boiling water. What that's going to do is soften these up and make them more pliable. And while it's still hot from that boiling water, hold it in there for a couple minutes, press that on, and it'll go on much easier. If you don't do that, it's like trying to mount a cold, stiff motorcycle tire. Uh, it's much easier to do it when it's been sitting in the sun for several hours. So once the new fuel line is attached and the hose clamp has held it in place, now I'm going to go and uh, reassemble everything 
and put this back inside. But before I do that, the one thing I want to do is I want to see what's down in the bottom of that tank. Uh, what stuff has accumulated in the last 10 years inside the tank before I put my Google Tech uh, in the neck fuel filter in place. So we're going to siphon this gas out using uh, the best dress moto siphon and then we're going we're to see what kind of nasties we've accumulated in the last 10 years. We're going to siphon the rest of the fuel in this gas tank so we can see what's down at the very bottom. We can't clean that out unless all the fuel's been removed. But I want to make a note that when you do this change out, you need to have the fuel level down below the top of the fuel cap. If you don't, there's going to be a mess. There's going to be gas all over the floor. Uh, I learned that from practical experience. So you'd want to siphon through the uh, filler neck and uh, get as much out as you can. What we're using here is the Best Rest Moto Siphon. Uh, it's a jiggler siphon that's self-priming. It's got this funny green wire on here and the purpose of that is to straighten out the hose so that I can jiggle straight up and down. And if I just jiggle that, it primes itself and now we've got a siphon going and I have a full siphon going, I can let go of the hose. We've even got a clamp that uh, we can put in line to shut off the siphon so that if I fill my container I can I can stop the process, I don't have to restart the siphon, it holds everything in place. Watch our video on that, it's pretty handy. I carry that in the field in case myself or somebody else needs some extra fuel. And I'm keeping an eye on the fuel as it's coming out of the gas tank <clears throat> and I can see some rather interesting tidbits down in there. We're going to clean those out and share what we find. It'll take a couple of minutes to uh, siphon this all out. I won't bore you so we'll cut to the very end. So as my fuel level goes down and things become more transparent I can see some crud that has collected in the bottom of that tank. This all happened before I installed the Googletech in the, the filler neck fuel filter. Uh, that Googletech would have stopped any of this from getting down there but what we're seeing is 10 years worth of trail abuse and we're almost there. The plastic mesh screen would have been the last resort oh, I'm sucking, sucking air now. This would have been the last resort to keep contaminants from getting up inside the fuel pump. If they get up in there, things like sand or dirt or uh, some form of material, that's going to affect the fuel pump and it can lead to failure. So this is what BMW provided. It is actually all the filtering that you ever got before it went into the pump and then finally it was filtered when it went through to the injectors going through the canister. And we've got it all out. And there are some nasty bits. Let me put on some gloves. So we've siphoned out all the gas. Now we're going to take a look inside. Uh, I'm going to show you something that you don't want to see inside your gas tank. Come on over here, Steve, and take a, take a view. All that stuff that accumulates over 10 years sinks down to the bottom, sloshes around, and the only thing preventing the crud from going up into the fuel pump is that wire mesh screen. That little thing right there. Now, to be perfectly honest, we staged a bit of this. Uh, all that stuff didn't end up there in my ride. When I did take it apart, we found sand and, and other stuff in there. Uh, I have a picture of that uh, to show what actually did accumulate. But I think that this made the point that all these things could end up inside. 
and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to scrape all that stuff out and we're going to put on that new filter and then we're going to go into the installation process uh, getting the bike ready to roll again. I wipe the inside of the gas tank to remove anything that's accumulated, any bits, any... Oh, <laughs> I missed something. Oh, it's an IPA. Take a break and we'll start the installation process. I've already told you that I've done this process before we ever started filming. Um, but I wanted to replicate what I would find if I first opened this up and I was dealing with the black BMW hoses or hose that runs between this filter and the pump. Uh, this black hose is press fit, heated and press fit onto the pump itself. And typically this is a 8 millimeter ogive or ogive uh, barbed fitting. However, my pump is 9.5, which is why I had to go to the other uh, kit from Google Tech, the MRT096. And that kit is typically used for the 1200. And we'll have all those application charts. But to get this hose off of here, I could either cut it down the, the length to remove it, or in my case, I was able to get it started with a screwdriver under the edge, just easing that up until I was able to pull it free. On the other end of this hose, where the filter is, there was an Oedeker clamp that was crimped in place permanently, and I twisted that off, I cut that off. You could use a grinder to cut that off too, and you would then pull off that hose because you're going to be replacing that old filter. In this case the old filter is the one I cut apart. This is one I put in just a few weeks ago and uh, it's brand new so we're going to reinstall it. Remember when you're installing this filter you have to put that o-ring back in. It comes with our kit but if you don't have our kit you found this filter elsewhere make sure you take the old o-ring and put it back. Here we have the Google Tech uh, fuel hose and it's got a specific size for your bike. In this case this is the MRT096 with an 8 millimeter here and a 9.5 here. Uh, I simply couldn't get the indicated uh, 095 to fit so I had to go to this. It works fine. The hose is a little longer. I just did a bit more of a curl. And each end of this is held with the hose clamp. If you don't mechanically attach these to the pump and to the filter, because of the pressure that the pump puts out, this thing's going to go zing and you're going to lose pressure in your fuel line and your bike's going to die. And although you could get in here and do this in the field, it wouldn't be a lot of fun. So this is a project you're going to want to be doing in your garage. Do it right. Use the clamps. Use the right filter, the right hose, and uh, we're going to be set to go. So we'll put it all back together and then we'll uh, go have another beer. When you're doing reassembly, here's some key notes that will help you get everything back together properly. On this housing right here, there's a small embossed letter R. You should be able to see that. If you can't see the R and you've got this housing turned around, it's not going to work. So look for that R. Uh, these two Phillips screws, remember they have a retainer on the back side. Make sure that that retainer piece is properly engaged into both screws. We have our wire assembly that runs the pump. We have our pump that we're going to drop into the plastic housing and align the bottom of the pump with the hole. It has to go in and snap in place and this shoulder right here hooks on these two tabs on either side. What we're looking for is that our fuel line 
is not crimped or pinched. It's got a nice smooth run all the way around. And if it's not smooth, then loosen one of the clamps and turn the hose as needed so that you don't have any kinks. And then using either a Phillips or a good uh, small, I think that's a six millimeter socket, tighten that up real good. I'm just double checking that I got it right. One of these connectors is going to snap into the top of the fuel pump. The other connectors are going to attach to the housing. Make sure I hear it click in place. And we have one final thing, which is our uh, gas gauge fuel sensor. That's going to snap into place there. So we made our three connections. And finally, we need to fit this housing back onto our metal piece. There's only one way that it can go. It's got some fixing tabs, little nipples, and then it's got four little hooks that snap onto the side of the, the plastic, snaps onto the metal. I want to make sure that that's truly in place and doesn't come loose because if it does, as my gauge goes up and down, uh, there's going to be a problem. Well, one problem I see right now is these wires are touching. I can fix that. I'm going to pull that connector apart again. And reroute that wire so that it's not in the way. Instead I'm going to go down between and up through and snap it. So now there's nothing to get in the way of my fuel sensor. Just a simple running down in between the the assembly between the components. Finally, we have our plastic strainer that fits on the bottom. This is nothing more than a press fit and it has to be pushed down onto the fuel pump and the only thing holding that in place is uh, the fact that I applied it with pressure. This does come apart in the middle. You can rotate this but I'm not going to risk damaging that part, so I'm just going to press it on here. There's two little tabs here that help to align this to keep it from rotating inside the gas tank. Now here's a key that I learned. Notice how this fuel sensor goes up and down like this. This plastic strainer can be oriented uh, off to the side if you're not careful. You can accidentally get it to turn perpendicular and that may or may not have a bearing on the use of this sensor. However, when you look inside the gas tank you can see that on this bike there's a, a tiny little space in the bottom of the tank and this would fit best if it's running parallel to the swing of the fuel sensor. So this is all done. This is all reassembled. We put on our new uh, fuel canister. We put on a new hose. If we wanted to, we could replace the pump. I'm not going to. I made all my connections. I've double checked to make sure that they're tight. One, two, grounding, three, and four. That's all good. Now we go to the gas tank itself. Just to make sure that nothing bad has happened since I was working on this, I'm going to look inside one more time. Everything is clean. 
one little metal flake that was down inside, but we're good. Now for the the gasket. And once again, I said if you uh, leave this out of the bike for any length of time, it gets to the point where it's no longer pliable, no longer flexible, and it will not install. So, and there's two sides. The largest part of the ring is up, and the small side goes down. I'm just going to fit that inside, and it'll hold itself in place. Now comes the interesting part. You have to be a bit of a contortionist with this because you have to fit all this down inside without causing any damage to this fuel sensor. And it's difficult to describe, but you're just basically going to fit these pieces in carefully and gently. You'll move the fuel hose, the new fuel hose out of the way, and you're going to gently push this down at the back side, right here, there's a wide tab that fits into a slot on this white plastic ring. It has to align with that, and once you get that in place and aligned, you can press this down into place until it's flat and slightly above this white plastic ring. I'm going to make sure that it's not moving side to side that it's not going to rotate because uh, that's an indication that my gasket has fallen out of place. The gasket is fitting over the edge of this rim on the gas tank and if it moves down like this I'm going to have a bad seal up at the top and I'm going to lose fuel around the top. So by checking to make sure that it it feels good we should be alright. Next I take my metal ring Remember we marked that one spot and we made a note that when I started the rotation I was almost in a full rotation, uh, almost 360 but not quite. So I'm starting here and now I'm going to tighten that down by hand. It'll click, it's telling you it's kind of engaging or locking. And then I'm going to take my hammer and my flat screwdriver and I'm going to gently tap that around until my black index mark is at the rear of the bike. That way I know I've tightened it down to the torque or the setting that it was when it left the factory. That's pretty much done. Next, I have to put this plastic or this rubber boot on top. I can't just drop it down uh, because this has to go through. Well I could. I could fit this in place and then try to, to put the screws in but I found for me it was easier to slide that fitting through the rubber boot first and then press that down the gas line connector down into the, the hole. It's got a couple of O-rings on there. And then finally use two screws to screw that down. And we'll do that process in a moment. Now it's just a matter of putting these last two screws down, holding the fitting where the fuel goes through the, the fuel line and goes to the injectors. Make sure that's tight. I mentioned that you don't need to take this housing apart. Uh, I think this is the, the uh, regulator for the pump. Uh, there is an O-ring in there, uh, but it's really nothing to be serviced, so just leave it in place. Now I take the, the rubber boot and get it all the way around so that it goes over the openings for the other wires. And it will almost snap in place, although it's flexible. The idea is that it protects everything.
and I pull out my two wires that I've pushed off to the side. You can't confuse them because they won't fit anywhere else. Press those down, listen to them click into place, and we're done. What we have to do now is put some fuel into the gas tank. Remember we drained it all out. We don't run, want to run this pump without any fuel in there. There will be a moment where the pump has to prime. Uh, so when you turn on your ignition, don't start the bike right away. Let it come up to speed. Let it fill the system with pressure. We'll get this thing wrapped up and we'll start the bike and let's see if this thing runs. So we've pulled out the fuel assembly. We've replaced the cartridge filter. Uh, we've cleaned out the gas tank, found some interesting bits and pieces inside. Uh, we put everything back, we've checked our fittings, we put our fuel back in the bike, and I think we're ready to go. We're going to fire this thing up. Oh, one last thing. Uh, we came up with some extra parts when we were finally done. Uh, none of these seem to be important, so we're not going to worry about whether we missed putting anything back in place. Uh, I joke about this but I've done projects where I ended up with a couple extra screws and had to go back and uh, and do everything over because I forgot to put them back but keeping all your parts in one spot is very important uh, obviously this is a joke but lessons well learned key is on I'm gonna take a moment <coughs> excuse me for the for the system to fuel up because we drained everything out the bike is in neutral and So, I've got another 10 years ahead of me with this new fuel filter. Everything's in good shape. Uh, the pump's probably okay. Uh, those don't fail very often, especially if there's no grit getting inside. We know it won't get inside because we've got a Google Tech fuel filter in the filler neck. That'll prevent all those nasties from getting down there and, and chewing up the pump itself. Uh, you can get Google Tech fuel filters for the neck. You can get them uh, the kit for the fuel pump. Uh, for the KTM guys, you can get the external fuel filters and the Godzilla uh, filter that goes on the bottom of the pump. That thing is always failing uh, on the stock OEM system. Google Tech's really done their homework when it comes to uh, their fuel filtration. And for the BMW boys like me, they've also got the world's best air filter uh, that is dry, that can be used over and over. It never wears out and it outperforms paper filters by a factor of seven and foam filters and cloth filters by a factor of two. You can find out more on our website. This is David with Best Rest Products. We'll see you on the trail.